Hi, I'm Brother Hammond. It's a joy to have you in worship today. If you're worshiping at home, I invite you to prepare yourself and your surroundings. Uh, get comfortable, maybe light a candle or two. Uh, we usually celebrate communion on the first Sunday of the month, and you're always welcome to join us for that. Just have a little bread and grape juice or wine for everyone. Uh, please let us know that you're here by scanning the QR code with the camera on your phone or smart device, or simply post a comment in the chat. I pray God blesses you through this service. We'll begin in just a moment. Good morning. Welcome to Asbury. It is a joy and a blessing to see you. Thank you for being with us today as we gather for worship. If you're watching online, welcome. We're glad you're with us. Uh, thank you for being here. It is baptism of the Lord Sunday, and so we are thankful that you're with us today as we come together and remember our baptism. It is also Covenant Renewal Sunday here at Asbury, and so we will do that a little bit later on in the service. One of the key principles of Methodism, one thing John Wesley believed, that was the first of the year was a good time to really renew your commitment to the body of faith and to the church. And so we will do that uh, this morning as well, along with uh, taking and participating in the sacrament of Holy Communion. I do have just a few announcements before we get started. First of all, as usual, uh, when you have an opportunity, please take a moment and log your attendance. You can do that by filling out the Connect tab that is in your bulletin. If you're here, if you're online, you can scan the QR code. One of the things that you will notice when you look at the Connect tab is something that I talked about last week uh, during the service. We have uh, a new vision as we head into 2023, and we're really thinking about four things. We're thinking about embracing others, connecting with the community, serving others, and sharing the love of Christ with all that we encounter. And so when you think about the areas and missions and ministries that you want to be part of in this coming year, uh, those will feed into those four themes. And when you look at the, the tab, you will see those opportunities uh, to sign up for those. So I encourage you to do so as we head into this new year. Really pray about what God is calling you to do and participate in. Uh, in this coming year. Uh, one of the questions that Hammett and I get a lot uh, is, when are you available? And so we wanted to kind of streamline that to help you all out so we're not playing a guessing game. And one thing you'll notice in the bulletin is a, uh, a QR code that connects you to a program that will allow you to schedule time with us. It could be a cup of coffee, it could be lunch, it could be just coming by the office, uh, but it's a run through what's called Calendly, and so you sign up and if you want to come by and just visit or whatever you want to do, um, that's a best way to do that, and so you can uh, scan the link there and that will help you. Our women's Bible study uh, will be uh, resuming on the 22nd, and that, that's a Sunday afternoon Bible study. Uh, it meets at 4 p.m. here at the church. And if you're interested in being part of that, and we would love for you to be, uh, then you can contact Jenny Curris, and she can give you information, or you can contact the church office so we can talk to you about it. On Sunday, January 29th at 10 p.m., I will be offering a class that we offer from time to time, which is called Starting Point. And the purpose of this class is for those who have been visiting Asbury for some time and are interested in learning more about the Methodist Church, about what we believe is Methodist, and about the life of Asbury. And so if you've been visiting for some time, if you've been thinking about membership, this is a great time to come and sit down and just get to hear more about what we believe and what our church is all about. So that'll be 10 o'clock on January 29th. And then the last thing, as I said before, we will celebrate Holy Communion today. If you're watching online, please gather your elements for later on in the service. With that, as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship, I invite you to stand up and pass the peace of Christ to your neighbor. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Asbury. I'm so glad that you're here. As we greet one another in person, you're welcome to greet each other in the chat if you like. Uh, you may also use this time to sign in or download the Sanctuary Bulletin by scanning the QR codes or by using the link below. May the peace of Christ be with you as we worship together.
Amen. Please stand and join me as you are able for this morning's call to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the year that the Lord has begun. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to those who seek him. Great is your faithfulness, O Lord. I now invite you to please remain standing for our hymn of praise this morning. This is a day of new beginnings, number 383 in your hymnal. invocation which is found printed in your bulletin. Spirit of righteousness, God of power and might, help us be a light to the nations and a reflection of your glorious salvation. Work in our lives and in our ministries that the world might know the power of your love and grace. As you alighted upon Jesus at his baptism, descend upon us this day that we may be a people of hope and possibility. Wash us clean and renew our spirits through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
As we prepare our hearts and minds for this time of offering, I'm always struck by the fourth verse of the hymn we sang this morning, which is that Christ is alive and goes before us to show and share what love can do. As we begin this year together as a church family, we are led by God. God always goes first. But he calls us to this faithful time of participating in his kingdom to change the world for his glory. There are many ways in which you can give, and today, since it is uh, Communion Sunday, we will have our community ministries offering, which we always have, that is above and beyond uh, the normal giving, and that will be at this plate when you come down today. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we, we are humbled this morning by the honor to participate in the kingdom building you call us to. It is a blessing to be this church where we are. Let us this morning see the call that you have placed in all of our lives as we renew our commitments. Let us see today where you are calling us to make a difference, to spread your love to those who need it the most. We ask all this in your son's beautiful name. Amen. <coughs>
I invite you to please remain standing this morning for our scripture lesson, which is from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 3, and I'll be reading verses 13 through 17. Hear now the Word of God. At that time, Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan River so that John would baptize him. John tried to stop him and said, I need to be baptized by you, yet you come to me. Jesus answered, allow me to be baptized now. This is necessary to fulfill all righteousness. So John agreed to baptize Jesus. When Jesus was baptized, he immediately came up out of the water. Heaven was opened to him and he saw the Spirit of God coming down like a dove and resting on him. A voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I dearly love. I find happiness in him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Well, welcome to Asbury. I'm glad to be back with you after a little break last week. And uh, I appreciate uh, Brother Nick for carrying on in my absence. And uh, if you missed his sermon and uh, you're having a hard time letting go of something that you blame yourself for, if you're having a hard time forgiving yourself, it's an excellent sermon uh, to listen to you, and I, I recommend it highly. Uh, just a, a quick word before we begin, uh, in that COVID levels in Pulaski County went back to high this past week. And uh, if you haven't gotten the latest shot, I got mine in October. I encourage you to do that. Uh, please wear a mask in indoor public spaces. And uh, again, if you're sick, please do worship from home. Uh, that's part of the, one of the reasons why that is available for us. Would you pray with me? Good and gracious God, we thank you at the beginning of this new year for being with us and for leading us forward. And we pray now that you will pour out your Holy Spirit upon us wherever we are gathered, so that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts may be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, you who are my strength and friend, our rock and our redeemer. And the people of God said, amen. In one of my granny's photo albums, uh, there is a picture of a really ugly baby. And I can say that that baby's ugly because that baby is me. Um, I'm kind of pink and purple and all wrinkled, and uh, yes, I was bald-headed even then. Um, but there's this bracelet on my wrist, and it's one of those kind of bracelets that you get when you're in the hospital. And it says, on, very closely, there are a couple of initials on it, it says T.M. Evans. Now, those are not my initials. Those are my father's initials. My initials are H.N. Evans. Those are dad's initials. And that was the day that I was born. The hospital identified me by my father's name on that day. Now, there's a, another picture at Granny's house that somebody took about a month later, and my, my, I'm looking more like myself. My cheeks are kind of, you know, a uh, little, little rounder, and I, I'm still bald-headed, but uh, that's another story. Uh, but the funny thing is, I'm wearing this really gorgeous, beautiful, frilly, lacy, white gown, and I was, it's a dress, and I was really embarrassed about that when I was a child, but of course, that was my baptismal gown. And see, just a few weeks after I was born, my parents took me to church one Sunday morning at Preston Hollow United Methodist Church in Dallas, Texas, where my father was the associate pastor. Uh, Dr. Carl Keatley, who grew up here in Little Rock, was the senior pastor there. Uh, he and my dad and my pawpaw, Gerald Hammett, uh, took me before God's altar uh, with my mom, and uh, they thanked God that even before I belonged to them, I belonged to him. They made a covenant that day, Then they thanked God for me as a gift, and they promised me and God that they would live in such a way that they embodied the love of Christ so that I would get to know and experience Christ's love through them. The church made me that promise too. And I experienced God's love through my family and through my church family. Not always perfectly, amen, but I did experience the love of Christ through them. And so when I got older, I made those covenant vows myself at my confirmation. So our baptism is like that ID bracelet that I got in the hospital on my birthday. It says, this child belongs to God. Uh, she may not know who God is, but God knows her. And she is a part of God's family. 
And we expect children to resemble their parents. And if you ever knew my mom and dad, I know some of you did, and you saw me, you would say, well, it looks like Nick and Kate Evans had a baby. And, and the same is true in our relationship with God as well. God's children should resemble God, not physically, but spiritually. We should be people of justice and mercy, but above all else, we should be loving. Uh, sometimes, every once in a while, I, I get asked about when I got my call to the ministry, and I like to say it was October 25th, 1970. I, I was one month and five days old. Uh, Reverend Lin Leonard Sweet has said, that there are only two kinds of ministers. There are ordained ministers and baptized ministers. So raise your hand if you've ever been ordained as a clergy person. I see two of us in the room. Raise your hand if you were ever baptized. You see, all of us are ministers. Ordained clergy like Brother Tom and me and laity like you partner to accomplish God's work together in the world. Now to do that effectively, we have to remember who we are and whose we are. So who are we? We've already said it. We're God's children. And whose are we? We are God's. We are God's beloved children. We belong to God, and our highest priority should be to live a life that pleases God, a life characterized by love. John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, understood that being God's child is about the process of being perfected in love. Wesley wrote, as Christ is all love, so are we, even in this world. Wesley also knew that we often fall short of that perfection. And so he advised Methodists to recommit themselves at the first of the year by renewing their covenant with God. And so we're going to do that in just a moment. And, and I invite you to uh, open your bulletin. There is an insert there uh, that we will go through. Wesley's words have, from long ago, almost 300 years ago, have been updated for us today. And before we go through this, I need to say that it is important for each and every one of us in the room to make these words our own. Uh, we cannot simply read them or go through the motions. These prayers are extremely powerful if we mean them in our heart. And so we don't want to lie to God today. So let us make these old words from John Wesley our words today. Uh, please join me in the service of covenant renewal found on the insert. God made a covenant with the people of Israel, which was renewed in Jesus Christ. In him, all people may be set free from sin and its power and united in love and obedience. In this covenant, God promises us new life in Christ. For our part, we promise to live no longer for ourselves, but for God. We meet, therefore, as generations have met before us, to renew the covenant which bound them and binds us to God. Let us then seek forgiveness for the sin by which we have denied God's claim upon us. And I invite you to join me in our prayer of confession. There will be responses which are on the back part of the insert in your bulletin. Let us humbly confess our sins to God. O oh God, you have shown us the way of life through your Son, Jesus Christ. We confess with shame our slowness to learn of him, our failure to follow him, and our reluctance to bear the cross. Have, Have mercy, mercy on, on us, us Lord, Lord, and, and forgive us. us. We confess the poverty of our worship, our neglect of fellowship, and of the means of grace, our hesitating witness for Christ, our evasion of responsibilities in our service, our imperfect stewardship of your gifts. Have, Have mercy, mercy on, on us, Lord, Lord and, and forgive us. us. Let each of us in silence make confession to God. Have mercy on us, Lord, and forgive us. Have mercy, Have mercy on, on me, O God. God. 
according, according to your steadfast love. In your abundant mercy, blot out, out my transgressions. transgressions. Wash, Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. sin. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, to all who truly repent, this is his gracious word. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Uh, John Wesley's brother Charles, who wrote so many of the hymns in our hymnal, including Hark the Herald Angels Sing, um, wrote a hymn for this covenant renewal service, and it's found on page 606 in the hymnal. Uh, we will sing it together. It's called, Come, Let Us Use the Grace Divine. Uh, the lyrics will also be on the screen if you're worshiping from home. words from John Wesley. Sisters and brothers in Christ, let us again accept our place within this covenant which God has made with us and with all who are called to be Christ's disciples. Christ has many services to be done. Some are more easy and honorable. Others are more difficult and disgraceful. Some are suitable to our inclinations and interests. Others are contrary to both. In some, we may please Christ and please ourselves. But then there are other works where we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. Yet the power to do all these things is given to us in Christ who strengthens us. Therefore, let us make this covenant of God our own. Let us give ourselves to him, trusting in his promises and relying on his grace. Let us therefore go to Christ and pray. I invite you to bow your head, and uh, Brother Nick and I will kneel at the altar on your behalf. Together the covenant prayer. Let me be your servant under your command. I am no longer my own, but yours. 
Your will, not mine, be done in all things, wherever you place me, in all that I do, and in all I may endure. I put myself fully into your hands. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I willingly offer all I have and am to serve you as and where you choose. Glorious and loving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours. May it be so forever. Let this covenant now made on earth be ratified in heaven. Lord our God, you have helped us by your grace to make these prayers. And you have promised through Christ our Lord that when two or three agree in his name, you will grant whatever they ask. Answer now your servants' prayers according to their needs. In this world, grant that we may truly know you. And in the world to come, graciously give us eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord and the people of God said, Amen. I want to invite you to take just a moment and sign, uh, just like you would a contract, uh, sign at the bottom of the, of the uh, insert. I usually, after I sign it, I slip it in the back of my Bible, and then throughout the year I will return to that and sometimes review it uh, and, and to remember uh, this, this day. As we transition to our uh, service of Holy Communion, I invite you to turn uh, to page 7 in your hymnal and also to page 2257B in the Faith We Sing. Um, your spoken responses will be in the hymnal starting on page seven, early on page 8, and then um, our sung responses will be on, in the Faith We Sing starting with 2257B. I, I do want you to know that if you're our guest today, uh, you don't have to be a member of our church to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion. Uh, in the United Methodist Church, we believe that this is not our table, it's the Lord's table, and all of God's children are welcome to receive. If you are worshiping online with us, you're uh, invited to, to join us as well. Uh, simply have grape juice or wine and bread available for yourself and for anyone who is worshiping with you. Let us continue now with our invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin to God and one another. Merciful God, we confess, confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. heart. We, we have failed, failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us share our confession with God in silence. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to, to God. God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. is your son Jesus Christ by the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to evil sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water in the spirit on the night in which he gave himself up for us he took the bread gave thanks to you broke it gave it to his disciples and said take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me 
when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, shared it with his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, God, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ. your Holy Spirit now on us wherever we are gathered and on our gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Gracious and loving God, we lift up all who are ill or in special need of your grace. We pray especially for Clifford Smith, for Barbara Clark, for Val Carr, for Jean Hammett, for Mark Shimmer, for Edith Roberts, for Hugh Roberts, for Gail Pulley. We pray for the family and friends of June Glacier. We pray for the family and friends of Jerry Mosley and all of those, God, whose names sit at the top of our hearts, the front of our minds, and the tips of our tongues. By your spirit, God, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we, though we are many, are one body. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. As those who are uh, assisting in serving communion come forward, uh, I do want to uh, let you know that uh, we do have gluten-free wafers available for those who need them. Simply ask your server when you, when you come. Uh, we also have some self-service packs if you would prefer those, uh, and those will be available from our ushers as well. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves to others. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the people of God said, Amen. If you would like to become a part of our church family by uh, transferring from another United Methodist Church or another denomination, you're welcome to come forward. Uh, if you've never professed your faith in Jesus Christ and received the sacrament of Christian baptism, uh, you're, I would love for, to visit with you about that, or Brother Nick would. Uh, just get in touch, and we would be glad to do that. Um, those options are also available for those of you who are worshiping online, and uh, my email address is there. Just get in touch, and uh, we will uh, check in with you. So would you please stand now as we uh, close with this great Charles Wesley hymn, and it's also short, which makes it even better. Uh, number 413, A Charge to Keep I Have.
want to encourage you to uh, come back next week. We'll, uh, we're kicking off a brand new worship series. It's called What Did Jesus Preach? And we're going to begin with the Beatitudes. And so uh, we'll, we'll start there next Sunday. And then that will go through the end of the season of Epiphany, which uh, runs into Lent, which is only about five or six weeks away. So pray for, pray for us as we prepare for that as well. Um, would you please receive this blessing? Go forth with Christ, with Christ above you to be your guide, with Christ below you to hold you up, with Christ beside you to be your friend, and with Christ within you to give you hope, love, joy, and peace. Go forth with Jesus Christ your Lord. And the people of God said, Amen. someone else. You can do that by sharing it on your Facebook page or you can text or email the link. If this was your first time to worship with us, there are a couple of ways that you may follow up. Uh, be sure to check out our website at the link below. Click on the visitor information button near the top of the home page. There you can fill out an online connect card to help us to get to know you a little bit better. You may also sign up for our email list and find out how to join Asbury there. Uh, you may also connect with us by following us on Facebook and by subscribing to our YouTube page. Whoever you are and wherever you are, you are always welcome at Asbury. If you live in central Arkansas, we'd love to meet you in person. You can find us at 1700 Napa Valley Drive in West Little Rock. If you have any questions or want to visit about joining our church family, email me at the link below. I look forward to seeing you at Asbury.